Will it be the King's Court next year in Philadelphia? So there is this guy in Philly uh, that bought three billboards in Cleveland wanting to bring LeBron James to Philadelphia. So CEO of Power Home Remodeling, his name is Asher Raphael, passionate Philadelphia sports fan, bought three in Cleveland. We're going to get into that right now. Kyle Gaffner is here. I am Adrian Fedchu. LeBron to Philly, baby! Yeah! Boo! No! Well, I don't want that dude here. Nah. Keep that drama queen out of here. Let him go out to L.A. It fits in with the theatrics out there. I, I don't want that garbage here. I'm good. You hate LeBron so much. <laughs> I, I really, really do. I really do. Well, here, here's what I'll say. Uh, because when you think about what the premise of the process was, it's more than just tanking for draft picks. It's about acquiring stars at its core. And obviously the Sixers, they have a pair of stars, Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. So you can acquire stars through the draft. You can potentially acquire them through free agency or through trade. Uh, Sam Hinkie uh, tried to acquire one through a trade one time and Andrew Bynum, that didn't really work out. So in this situation, the Sixers could potentially acquire the star of stars, LeBron James, uh, during the offseason. So uh, that's part of the process that, uh, you know, would be the free agent end. But, again, let's get into why you don't want LeBron James in Philadelphia, just, just to kind of clear the air a little bit here. Sure, 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 sure. It's, it's not his level of athleticism or his competition or it, just his overall way he plays basketball. He's the best of the best out there. Would he fit in great here? Would he possibly bring us championships? Yes. It's what he brings outside of it with, with his, his negativity, his, his theatrics outside of it. If stuff goes wrong, he just whines and complains and blames people. And I feel like he just tears organizations down. He did it in Miami. He did it in Cleveland. I, I don't want that bad vibe. I don't want that here. I don't want our locker room to be a cancer and, and, and just people turn on each other. It just feels like – he dictates everything. Like, I'm a superstar. I'm the best player here. Now you got to listen to me. I'm the GM. Move over, BC. Shut up, Brett Brown. Y'all listen to me. I'm the hey, sh- listen. Listen. LeBron is probably a better GM than freaking Colangelo. <laughs> That's on. probably true. Go That's on. probably true. I just had to interrupt you there and make that point. Keep going. <laughs> Yeah, so, I, I mean, that would be it. Uh, am I willing to trade championships for that? Probably not. I don't, I don't want that. That's just a, a big, big no-no for me to, to have the locker room just torn apart. I think we got a good camaraderie what we have here. I just think we've got a good personalities that we have here. Um, now, I will say to the side of having him here to help Ben Simmons progress through his – young you know his young years to, to teach him the ways he and I know he trains with him in the offseason which is great because you want Ben Simmons to even turn into LeBron because he's a phenomenal talent one of the best we've ever seen uh, I, you know I can't deny that I can't sit here and lie through my teeth and say he's not the best player I've seen I didn't get to catch MJ you know a little too young for that so this is our generation's MJ I mean the guy is the best of the best freak a- a- athletic Smart, defensive prowess, uh, I mean, competitive. I love that about LeBron. But it, it's just the stuff outside of basketball that I don't want here. Yeah. I mean, uh, so I'm going to show you guys uh, kind of what, what was going on in, in Cleveland. So, by the way, the Sixers play Cleveland in, in three days. It's not Thursday. They're in Cleveland. They're going to play them. So here are some of the billboards, as we see right here. You can see that in your end, correct? Mm-hmm. So we, we got the king right here. Why does he get the crown, though? All right? <laughs> I don't want him getting the crown. Joel should get the crown. Right. I, I digress. All right, so the next photo here. Come on, Kyle. That's Come awesome. On. You I don't like want that. to complete the process. I do like you that. You don't want to complete it. Come on, LeBron. Come on. <laughs> I love the way that this guy is trying to make a push to come to Philadelphia. There is a reason. If, you, if it is between us and L.A., I mean, we've got the younger core. We have we are more for advanced than the Lakers with who we have. But I'm wondering, how would he play with Ben Simmons? Do you think that they could play together? Do you think 
he would take a back seat. That's what I'm wondering if LeBron can't do. Can can he be that veteran presence and sit back and let these young kids turn into budding stars while he kind of just be the ment- you know becomes the mentor? I don't think LeBron can do that. I think he likes the limelight on him. You know, he'll run the show in the beginning, but as he ages, he will have to kind of pass the baton and he will have to play that veteran role uh, that, you know, I I think he should by the time he's, you know, say 35, 36 years old. Um, But, but obviously the reason why this situation for LeBron would be so enticing, he is obsessed with Michael Jordan and catching Mm -hmm. his legacy, catching his ghost. So he, he's halfway there to, to the six NBA championships. Uh, and the situation here in Philly, I mean, you got two budding stars, Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons. You're staying in the Eastern Conference. So you don't have to go out west to, to – L- I, I don't know why L.A.'s been, been talked about so much. I, I don't see how that situation would entice LeBron that much. I, I mean, Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram and – all those guys, I, I, I would think he'd rather come play in Philly, but uh, that's just my opinion there. Um, but um, the, the reason why the, the rumors have started, okay, so you had Smitty from Barstool. Um, let's see if I can find this. Oh, I had, I had his – I had all the tweets up, and now I, I lost them. But, <laughs> um, but here, I'll, I'll show you guys this tweet from, from Jason Martinez of, of 97.5. So – there were rumors around last week. Smitty basically said that uh, representatives from, from LeBron and whatever, uh, they were looking at options in Philadelphia about uh, where his kids might go. And Jason Mertidis, as you can see this tweet, at event tonight received tip from good source with direct communication from Malvern Prep employee that LeBron James representatives did in fact tour Malvern Thursday and also met with players' families. It seems LeBron's people are exploring, uh, exploring options should he come to Philly. So we got that tweet, and we got a bunch of stuff that's come out. But also on the other side of the coin, we also have this. So this, this is from, uh, as you can see, this is a, a phillymag.com piece. And we, we go down here. So this is uh, from a Malvern, te- uh, Malvern Prep teacher administrator, and, and he went to Facebook to say this. Okay, Facebook friends, I've received about two dozen – inquiries regarding the rumors that LeBron James is looking at Malvern Prep for his son next year after he's traded. No, he's not going to be traded to the Sixers. Oh, my God, this guy knows nothing. Uh, I can honestly say that I heard nothing, saw nothing, or know nothing about this. Only God knows how the rumor started, but it's been on several radio stations. A former student of mine, Jason Martinez from Sports Radio, messaged me yesterday, and I told him the exact – I told him the same thing I'm telling you. Uh, the only family that I took on a recent tour of the campus was three weeks ago, and it was an alum of 81, Steve Nesmith, and his wife and son. Steve is considering sending Stefan to MP next year. Now, Steve did play basketball for Malvern and was instrumental in bringing us a basketball title in 1981, but he isn't LeBron James or even looks like him. So until you hear otherwise from me, please just consider it a rumor until I post something different. Thank you. So as you can see, the, the rumor started from, from Smitty Barstool, Jason Martinez, you know, put the gas on the fire, and then we had this come out. So I just kind of wanted to share you that to clear the air on all of those shenanigans. And I don't know if it's so much LeBron wanting to go out there to play basketball with Lonzo Ball and, and Ingram. I had heard he wants to go out there to kind of end his career because of his companies that he owns, and he kind of just wants to – uh, get into the acting business, making movies, so on and so forth, you know, the City of Lights, L.A., Hollywood. That's why he would really want to move out there, not so more or less play with those guys. And and that's the reason the Clippers unloaded Blake Griffin was to make a big push at LeBron. But we all know that they're not going to land LeBron James. He's not going to go play for the L.A. Clippers. That's I don't care how much money they throw at him. But – Here's another thing, too. LeBron is seeking, I think, one of the biggest contracts to ever be made. I think, what was it? It was like $300 million I, I had read. Um, so do we have the cap space to get that? We have enough money to, to throw it at him. But well, we they have the cap space. They, they wow. got the bula. So you figure you want to factor that in, too. But to complete the process, right, it's not always just drafting. You want to get them in trades and attract big free agents. Um, that's definitely key. And LeBron James would definitely be one of them too. Uh, so it, it's fun to think about. 
you, you see what we have now, and, and you're getting a little taste of it. And if you yeah. throw in a superstar Hall of Famer like LeBron James, it just it it it, it, it just puts a smile on your face. Not me, but it's well, not you. Yes, yeah. so I was going to say, wait. I was like, wait, mid show, you changed your stance. Yeah. Not me, but it puts a smile on a lot of Sixer, um, you know, Sixer fans' faces that yeah. to have that figment of your imagination. I did want to clear up some of those rumors, though. That's why we're doing this show as well, because uh, mm-hmm. some of the things that I've read, uh, uh, a lot of people are making assumptions, and uh, it's. But according to like the actual people who work at Malvern Prep, they haven't heard anything. Now it's possible that you know it could be such a private matter that. LeBron James might have only, you know, contacted one person or whatever, and that one person might not spill the beans. Um, so that that could be a possibility as well. But uh, who the hell knows? But at this point, it, it's fun to talk about. We're going to get views off this. So thanks, guys, for watching. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. And if you say, say Sixers do land a big fish like LeBron James, that's more than likely going to attract another big fish, like a Paul George. Oh, um, I was about to say the same thing. A quartet wow. of stars, baby. Yeah, man. You, you know, you can have that. Uh, possibly a Kawhi Leonard. Uh, who else is a free agent out there? Um, oh, God, there's another. That's a, that's a different show. But I can't even think about who free agents are at this point. No, I, yeah, but, you know, to speak of the two, that would be uh, two of the big names that he could even attract to come play here. Uh, now would you consider us one of those super teams but you know the nba is trying to change its whole playoff format so does that make lebron change his mind that's staying in the east because if they do that one to 16 that's going to change everything that's if if they even do it though it seems like they've been talking about that for like a decade now Mm -hmm. and i i swear that the west has been better than the east since like 2000 like it's been that long it like has been a long Lakers time. won three in a row. I uh, remember back in you know the early two thousands, you had the Kings and, and the Mavs and all those great teams. While in the Spurs, well, yeah, yeah, Spurs obviously. While in the East, you had like the it was like the Pistons and, and the Nets, the freaking <laughs> Nets made it to two NBA Finals. This like, crazy. Good God, good <laughs> God, the East has been bad for twenty years now. Kerry Kittles and Keith Van Horn. Oh, like. <laughs> oh, they had Todd McCulloch on that team. <laughs> and he got dunked on. Trash. Those guys were Garden Shack. Like, those were not very good finals. Not entertaining at all. But they have. And there's always going to be imbalance. They're, I know they're trying to do that to even it out. But teams in the West were missing out on the playoffs, being like 10 games, 11 games over 500. Well, you know what? That should be motivation for next year to be like, maybe I should have played harder in this game. Let's not change it out so we can even it out because teams over in the East are, you know, barely over 500 making to the playoffs. No, Adam Silver, no Squidward. You don't try to change that. You don't break it. It's not broken. You don't try to fix it. You just yeah. don't do it. I hate it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm in agreement with the, the whole lottery thing. That's fine. I mean, the Sixers yeah. aren't trying to tank anymore, so it's all good. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter to you. You think it's rigged anyway. I think it's definitely rigged. <laughs> it definitely is. Think no, about it. It doesn't even – the rule change means nothing. No, it doesn't because it's rigged, man. If you think about it, it all benefits <laughs> the NBA. You have all the old school rivals, all the be- – yeah, Eric believes the same thing. I swear it's rigged, man, for sure. Um, all fixed, Adrian. <laughs> Don't get me on that rant, because uh, uh, I, I had a, I had a YouTube guy commenter like telling me the Super Bowl is fixed. Well, here, here's what he said at first. He said, oh, "Well, not to get on this discussion, but he said the whole week leading up to the Super Bowl, the Patriots were going to win because it was scripted." And then, and I told him like, "Shut the fuck up, dude! Like, like Eagles are going to win." Da 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 da. And then the Eagles won. And then he turned it around. He's like, "Oh, after thinking about it, it was obvious that the game was scripted for the Eagles." Da, 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 da. So. Yeah, there you go. We, nah. I, get, I get people like that. No, nah, I don't think football or, or anything like that can be fixed. So, you know, there has been stuff that has been fixed, like the World Series back in 1919. You had the uh, NBA Finals in the early 2000s where that ref had come out and said he fixed games. But they have to really try to put that, nip that in the bud. But the Super Bowl isn't fixed. We all just like to say that because we all hate the Patriots. Yeah, it seems that way that they benefited. But – 
No, nah, that's definitely not fixed for yeah. sure. I, I don't think so. All right, so, yeah, moving on where this is a basketball show. <laughs> so, I- anything else you want to say on LeBron before we kind of move on to a different subject? Um, I just don't know how he would fit the system if he did come here because he's very ball dominant. So is Ben Simmons. We all know ball, Ben can move without the ball in his hands, but I still feel like he has to be effective with it in his hands all the time. Um, I, I just don't think those two would play well together. I don't see either of them coming off the bench and putting their egos aside and coming off the bench. It, it just wouldn't work well here. And then you got Markel Fultz to put into the mix too. Yeah, he would definitely come off the bench, but you know he wants to start as well. So that would affect Markel Fultz's starting position. Well, Markel Fultz is in no position right now to, to, to be wanting to start. So, no. it, so he, he would be in the uh, James Harden role when he started out with Oklahoma City, come off mm-hmm. the bench and be the sixth man. Mm-hmm. And there you go. Uh, now, I, I know you would have worries about them playing together, but we're also talking about the best player in the league. And fuck, man, Ben Simmons, I, I don't know. He, he's like already a top 20 player. He's that good. He so, is. He's unbelievable. He's I been would, a joy would, to watch all season. Yeah, I would, I would find a way to make that work. And just from watching him, uh, you know, recently, I, I, I think he's become really, really aggressive attacking the rim. And that's something that uh, I wanted to see out of him uh, coming into this season because I thought he was a little bit, you know, passive aggressive with, with some things. And I was like, all right, I want to see the aggressiveness. I want to see him actually get to the rim on a consistent basis. And he's been doing that more and more and more. And uh, he's, he's been outstanding. He, he has. And there still has been some games where he is a little bit passive, where he gets in his own head and yeah. he just disappears in games. Uh, they stand, it happened last night. Uh, he got a quiet 16, 8, and 8. I don't know if you caught the game last night, but yeah. he just like overall it. played bad, bad basketball. And I wanted to see Ben be aggressive like he was in the Chicago game because he was just outstanding attacking the rim. Nobody can stop him, really, especially on the Wizards. Uh, and for him to work in that shot, he's got to do that a little bit more because they are just going to load up the paint, so you're not going to be able to be more effective, as effective and kicking it out. And we need shooters that can knock down jump shots. Shooting 36%, Adrian, is not going to get it done. Well, that's a good segue to our next little tidbit. So I was originally going to make a video about the success of the team since December, but uh, – Obviously, this LeBron James news is, is now taking over, so we're going to put that on hold and do that next week. But we will talk about the acquisition of Ursan Ilyasova and Marco Bellinelli. Now, I'll, I'll tell you right away, Marco, uh, stop it with the contested shots. Uh, when, when there's a hand in your face, uh, please don't shoot the ball. Uh, also, uh, when there's three defenders around you, don't shoot the ball. Uh, let Ben Simmons drive and kick and get you open and then shoot the ball. That's what you do, Marco. You would think these, <laughs> these vets would understand that, being in the league for over 10 years. But other than his debut, he's kind of been very inconsistent. Like yeah. you had touched on, he's shooting contested shots. He's taking awful shots with one, <laughs> off of one leg. You're not Dirk Nowitzki. Please stop doing that. <laughs> he throws the ball into traffic. Um, and his defense has been the lack thereof. Covington does this a lot, though, too. When he doesn't want to put the ball on the floor, he just wants to jack up a shot when there's two seconds off the shot clock. No. Calm down. Work the set over again. Give it down to Embiid or kick it down to or kick it out to Ben Simmons so we can create a play. But the acquisition of Il, you know, Ilyasova should definitely benefit the Sixers. Absolutely. And uh, you talked about the 36% mark from three. I believe that's like – literally midway through the pack. It's like 17th in the league. And, and this is a team, obviously, Brett Brown, they want to shoot the, the three a lot and uh, get up and down the floor and dribble penetration, kick out to your shooters. Uh, that's what you want to do. And you got a pair of guys that can, can knock down some shots. Ilya Sova, obviously, uh, was here a couple of years ago. Actually, it was last year. Uh, mm-hmm. Not a couple of years ago, literally last year. So Seems it's, like it's a couple of years ago. It seems like it, yeah. That, uh, every, every year is like three years in the process. It's like fucking doggy years. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, man, it, he was probably the best big man the, the, the Sixers had last year. When you think about who could play with Embiid and uh, his ability to stretch the floor gives Embiid more room to operate. He wasn't able to do it with, with Ja and, and Nolan's Noel. Those guys were paint cloggers. So uh, you bring in a guy in Ilyasova who averaged 15 points a game while he's here in Philly, 
Won't be doing that off the bench, but still is going to provide you solid production. Yeah, it would be a nice little shot in the arm. And we do have a plethora of power forwards, and I know people are concerned at that. Who are we going to cut when he does get on this team? We're limited at guard, so you don't really want to cut TLC, Egghead, any of those guys. So it will be interesting. <laughs> Jared Bayless. So be <laughs> Dude, I, I, I don't care. Just cut Jared Bayless. <laughs> yeah, I would be happy if they got rid of him. I mean, he, he's really not going to hurt, make, or break this team. But, um, you know, he, he will provide – I think he could play a little bit of small forward. He's going to stretch the floor. He's still averaging 10 points. He is only 30. He's going to turn 31 in May. Uh, but it's going to be a guy that can work well with Embiid and Ben Simmons. You know, and I think a lot to do with these last two games that have been a little bit stressful, or even I would say the Orlando game too, is we got to put some pressure on Brett. I don't like the way he's been not being able to make adjustments and he uses the same rotation. He doesn't get guys in that I feel like deserve minutes. Like when we were down 23 the other night, there is no reason that Rashawn Holmes shouldn't have been in there and, and give you a little rejuvenation of energy out there. Or even the, the bookers, like Amir Johnson's been killing us on the defensive end. Or let, let's get Moss out there. Or Demetrius Jackson, let's just mix it up a bit. Get some different guys out there. You know, it could be a shot in the arm. These guys could get hot. You don't really know until you play them. There, you know, there's 15 guys on the bench for a reason. You don't want to stick with an eight, nine man rotation. It's just not going to be beneficial. I mean, in B last night, I think he played for, what, 18 minutes straight at one point? Uh, I was like, Jesus, when is he going to get a break? He almost collapsed walking over there at the nine-minute mark. So he was doing a lot. J.J. was very inconsistent last night. Uh, but we, we got to get some cork miles out there, somebody. Yeah. Um, in terms of who they would cut, if, if I had to guess, even though they just acquired him uh, from the Nets, I, I'd probably go with Trevor Booker. Think Book? I think Booker's going to be gone. I hate. I'll say this though. I hate Amir Johnson. I, I never wanted him signed. I, I I know he's like the the scrapper off the bench, but I I can't stand him. And and if Rashad Holmes doesn't get more minutes than him soon, I'm, I'm going to be pissed off. I mean, it's mind boggling. He's better with this lineup with Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid. He gives you energy. He crashes the boards. He can block shots. All the stuff Amir Johnson can't do. <laughs> it looks like old man river out there where he's getting his ankles broken. He's so late on the defensive weak side. Uh, he, he, well, he can't even jump half the time. Dude. And when he does get the ball in his hands, it looks like he's been eating buttery popcorn because it just slips right out of his hands when he's right under the basket. Extra butter. God, dude. It's just, you just want to throw your phone at your TV. Stop giving this dude minutes. I don't care if he's getting 11 million. Sit on the bench and get paid. Like, Oh, my God, dude. BC's two signings have been atrocious. Awful. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect from the guy? <laughs> Very good point. <laughs> Not much less. Here, like, I, I'm trying to think top of my head. If I'd probably go Booker, right? Yeah, it, it, and it's a shame because I kind of like Booker. I do, too. I do, too. But you know what? That's the stupidity of Colangelo for trading Ja for a big guy. <laughs> Another big guy. <laughs> That's what I mean. We have a plethora of big men. <sighs> you must like the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> it's something, dude. It's something. And can you really credit this guy for doing anything? I mean, he's still on the training wheels of Sam Inky. He hasn't really made a move that has blown us away. He has been absolutely atrocious since he's taken over. Well, I mean, what we expected, right? He's been yeah. advertised, what we expected. I mean, we, we like Markel Fultz, but he's looking dumber and dumber each day with, with that. My God. I mean, I'm, I'm not giving up on Fultz, but, but Jesus. Like, this, this whole thing is, is – start, it's a little concerning. Yeah, it, you know? it is. And we don't know what's going on. He doesn't fill us in. Is it mental? Is there a rift between Markel and – because I saw another video where he was shooting, and he looked pretty clean. He looked fine. He looked good. Why isn't he playing? It's a big question mark. Is it all in his head? Is he a Nelson Aguilar uh, retread? I hope that's all it is, dude. If it's all just a moment, <laughs> It's the curse. Oh. Curse of Nelly. Curse of Sam. 
The higster. <laughs> Sam said, do everything you can to get BC far. I'm coming back, fellas. <laughs> Let's make up this disease. Oh, man. How to shoot. We obviously had that video last week about uh, BC, so we, that's, that's pretty much it on that front. But uh, there we go. All right, so we weren't going to keep this that long of a show. Uh, anything else to, to talk about before we head out? Um. Yeah, pretty much. I just didn't want to talk about too much. I wanted to save some material. Yeah, definitely want to save some material. And, you know, I'm still pretty upset that we didn't make a trade at the trade deadline for maybe some guard depth. And yeah. I think it showed a little last night that we're hurting with not, you know, Markel Fultz not being out there because we don't really have guards that can guard. I mean, these guys can't even step in front of everybody. And can you really blame our big man, big man for Embiid getting in foul trouble and Amir Johnson not being able? I mean, they're just blown right by these guys it's just no no defense yeah last night was pretty pitiful i i, I mean the, the final score was not indicative of, of how vastly beaten they were uh, they were absolutely dominated the first half was was atrocious uh i mean that's all uh so i i uh i was doing two things at once i was watching the the elimination chamber <laughs> wwe which unfortunately is the reason why we're not streaming right now <laughs> because <laughs> those assholes. All right. So, so here, here's why I'm not streaming. I'll, I'll talk about this since we have a little bit of time. Uh, I was at the Royal rumble and I was bored pre-show. So I, I did a little chat uh, before the show started and uh, you know, I was basically trying to kill some time and I was doing a little Q and a session, answering questions from the fans. Cause I'm a man of the people, you know, the people's champ. I'm like the rock. <laughs> yeah, do the eyebrow uh and i i guess there there was a well you had a, a a match between it was the club well if you guys fucking watch wrestling basically there was a tag team match and i i kind of was uh filming the entrances because first of all the lighting was terrible i was coming in dark so i flipped the camera around and I guess uh, I filmed the entrances, and I guess for a split second, I, I filmed, like, the start of the match. But I also, you know, closed the video before the match basically started. Like, if, if I captured the match, it might have been, like, a second or two. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I got flagged for it. So I got a three-month ban on the live stream because of that. And I'm pissed at the WWE. And after Roman Reigns won last night, I might not even watch it anymore. <laughs> now that's something you know that's fixed for sure, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh it's real. Dressing is real. <laughs> there are some people out there that think that. But I know, dude, it sucks. Like, trying to find formats to be able to do live streaming, you have to record everything. It doesn't upload as fast. And then we don't get to interact with our fans. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully that band, it's like a ticky tack slap on the wrist foul over nothing. I, yeah. I've seen people record the Sixers games full on length and nothing happens to them. It's, it's baffling. And then like, it was a video that nobody even watched anyway. It was just, nobody watched it. So it was a robot or somebody on YouTube. Yeah, definitely sitting definitely a robot. Definitely a robot. Like wh whoever, like, I don't know whether they were catching phones in the audience. I, I don't know. But I didn't even, like, record the match. And then, of course, I contact YouTube. Nothing is done. So I contact WWE. No one contacts me back. So it's ridiculous. It is what it is. So, unfortunately, if you guys are wondering why we're not live streaming, that is why. So we will get our live stream back by the end of April, I believe, which is just absolutely ridiculous. But it is what it is. Luckily, we can still broadcast stuff. I didn't know if they were going to take us off completely, but at least we can still record and put up, you know, put stuff up. Yeah. Uh, it's just a minor bump. We just got to get around it, but we'll be good. We got some March Madness stuff coming up at spring yeah. training as well. Yeah, definitely. So I learned my lesson. I will never do a and a session before a pay-per-view ever again. By the way, I, did the, I, I literally did the same thing the night before. I was at an NXT event. And I did a Q&A session, but I didn't flip the camera around because the lighting was good enough. That's the only reason why I flipped it around, because I was coming in completely dark. Where I was sitting, you couldn't see me. It was, you see was, that, Vince McMahon, you greedy bastard? <laughs> yeah. See? You, you couldn't see me. I was like John Cena for five minutes. And, and then I, I flipped the camera around, and I got fucked. So. Freaking unbelievable. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's that's why I can't live stream. Uh, all right, anything else you want to say, final thoughts? Uh, I pretty much touched on it. I, it. It sucked that we lost last night. I thought we really needed to get a leg up there. Oh, yeah, actually, I will say something. Yeah. How, what, did you think, what did you think of the All-Star weekend? Did you uh, watch it? Dude, I, I actually really enjoyed the All-Star game. I, I was surprised because I, I – Every time a, a league has tried to do, like, this, this all-star draft, it hasn't worked, whether it's been hockey, uh, football. Baseball hasn't done it yet, but it hasn't worked at all for those sports. I, I actually thought it diluted and, and made the all-star game worse. But for this occasion, it actually worked, and we saw defense being played because the last two years, it, the game has literally been played, what, in the, like, the 180s, 190s, and guys are just driving in unabated to the rim. So we saw defense being played, and, and when you see be- defense being played, that forces the All-Stars to make All-Star type plays. And, you know, some of the stuff that we saw was, was pretty extraordinary. Uh, best game I've watched in, I don't know, a decade? Yeah, easy. I, I agree with you 100%, and I think they should do that next year. I thought it was nice that they mixed it up. It kind of refreshed the league a little bit, gave it something new, a new look. Uh, last year, they, you had guys laying down on the ground and letting dudes dunk over them like Steph Curry did it a few times. It hasn't been watchable. I haven't watched the All-Star game in about 10 years because that's the last time it was good. But to see defense out there was phenomenal, and it really was refreshing to watch. And even the dunk contest was good, too. It was okay. I, I, uh, well, I, the best one was the one in Brooklyn, that, like, the, the one best one recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need Zach Levine back in it. The, the only thing that pissed me off was DJ Khaled. Well, not that he pissed me off with his scoring, but as a fat fuck who can't jump five inches off the ground, he's not somebody that should be judging a no. dunk contest. No. I mean, Chris Rock shouldn't be judging a dunk contest. Marky Mark, Mark shouldn't be judging a dunk contest. No. Because do you know who the best dunker of the night was? It was a guy that didn't even make it to the finals. It was Dennis Smith. That, that between the legs 360 that he did was, was extraordinary. And he didn't get enough points on, on, the, on the pump and, and the – what did he do? Was it a pump and a, re, and a windmill or was it a reverse? I don't even remember. But I, I forget, too. I think it was yeah. a pump and a reverse. Yeah. So he did like a, a double clutch move, and he didn't really get a high score for it because I think he missed a, a prior dunk. But uh, what he did – was better than what Larry Nance did and better than what Donovan Mitchell did. So Yeah, that Larry Nance thing, like, he was paying tribute to his dad, which I got, which was, you know, okay. And I did, like, uh, who paid tribute to Vince Carter? Was that Mitchell that, that did that? Mitchell at the end. And so, I, I didn't think he had the fluidity that Vince Carter did. And he, no. I think he got a – did he get a 50 on the dunk? Or? I think it was a fi- – no, no, it wasn't. It was, like, a 48, actually. It's something like that. But still, that's way too high. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't even close to what, what Vince Sanity did. Because uh, even Larry Nance did that, that dunk from behind the basket. That yeah. LeBron, that, not, not LeBron, no, that Vince Carter did. And the way he, like the fluidity in his, in his windmill, uh, the, it's not like tight. I, I don't know how to describe a dunk like that, but I, I think you know what I'm talking about. It wasn't anything like Vince did. It was just copycatting. I think they do yeah. need to, to liven that up a bit. And the judges should just be like Dominique Wilkins out there, Dr. J, guys that know what they're doing. I mean, even get Vince Carter out there, for God's yeah. sake. That's, That's what it usually is. is. They usually bring the, the legend dunkers back to judge. And it was just Dr. J. I mean, Lisa Leslie, okay, I'm cool with that because she actually dunks in games. She's done mm-hmm. that before. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so I, I think she might have actually been the first WNBA woman to dunk in a game, if I remember correctly. So wow. I, I, I think uh, that that would have been fine. But, um, but I mean, come on. Mark, Mark Wahlberg is like 5'3". Uh, DJ Khaled weighs more than EDP. Uh, and, and who was the other? And Chris Rock. Like, Chris Rock. Come on. Horrible. I've seen him shoot a basketball. And it doesn't look pretty. There's a reason he does stand up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's not standing up at the foul line. <laughs> his, best, his game is a freaking joke, dude. It's just – that's why I think where the media just over floods that and, and, and freaking bring in stars in like that. Like, stop. And I know a lot of people weren't happy about uh, Kevin Hart doing the intros either. 
I, I thought they drugged that out just a little bit. Honestly, I, I DVR'd the game, so I didn't even watch it. Uh, but I did, I did catch the Fergie national anthem. <laughs> oh I, my gosh! It was so be- it was so beautiful. It made me weep. God, I don't know why Shaq was sticking up for her unless he was hitting it. I I don't understand. It was the worst national anthem I think I've ever heard. Like with something stuck in her throat, and she was just going like, "Oh, yeah, she had something like, stuck in her throat." She had Shaq's cock stuck in her throat. <laughs> that was just an abomination. My God, and she's a professional. Like that just shows how how uh, you you don't need any talent anymore to make it in the, freaking- the Black Eyed Peas have covered up her lack of singing. Like, Charles was about to roast her, and, and Shaq wouldn't let her do it. I was <laughs> waiting for him just to rip her a new one, and Shaq just, like, nipped him in the butt. It sucked. Oh, man. Come on, man. Get her. Get her, yeah, I, Charles. I didn't watch the Kevin Hart stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm normally a fan of Kevin Hart, so I don't know what, what, what was so bad about what he it, did. It, it was just prolonged. It, it was uh, just – okay. Yeah, because the game didn't supposed to start at 8, and it started at like 8.40. So it was just – with that and the national anthem, it just drug it out a little bit too long. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I, I, that's why I DVR a lot. Like, I, the way, I'm weird. Uh, now, I watch NFL games live. I, and, I, and I'm actually getting forced to watch the NBA games live because I have to do this stuff for Philly Influencer. But uh, I like watching like an hour or two behind and catching up on the commercials. I mean, why watch a game in two and a half hours when you can watch it in an hour? Right. That's nice to zip through. The commercials are annoying. Yeah. yeah so that's, that's why I like uh, even, even the NFL games, man. Like I'll, I'll wait for the, the NFL uh, game pass, the replay, like the condensed version, you watch a game in like 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. So that's how I'm able to watch like li- literally every game in the NFL because of the game pass and everything is condensed. I mean, you don't watch a game for three hours. You watch it in 30 minutes. Yeah, it, it is very nice. It's just if you're able to ignore the scores and not get updates, so basically shut your phone off and not watching basically anything with yeah. the screen to kind yeah. of ruin that because it, it's not the same watching a game when you already know the outcome. Yeah, I'll, I'll still watch it, though. But, uh, but like, I, I do try and do that. I learned that art at the Sports Network because the Sports Network – I wouldn't always have to cover the, the Eagles. They, I, they would make you cover different things. Mm. Obviously, it's located in, it was located in Philly, so everybody wanted to cover the Eagles. So you kind of took turns with it. Mm. So if you covered a different team, uh, I learned the art to not know the score. And I would watch the Eagles when I got home uh, from work and not know the score of what happened. That's, so, that's good, man. So I somehow, like, I told everybody, like, listen, shut the fuck up. Don't tell me anything. I don't want to know. Uh, so I, somehow, somehow I was able to, to do that on a consistent basis. Uh, now other people would just, uh, basically watch the Eagles instead of cover their own games. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I was that guy. Uh, I actually, cause I took my job seriously. I, I mean, I want to make it in this business. So, um, I, I took it seriously and it's, it's not like I was covering the Browns. I, I was, I was covering all the big games because, you know, big time players make, uh, cover the big time games that's that's right there you go that's why i covered five super bowls baby there you go so that's all right so that's about it we we uh basically got on a, a complete tangent with irrelevant from the topic we had at hand originally but uh hey we got some more time out of the show at least i guess yeah yeah we definitely did you know it wasn't just about the sixers we got a little nba in there a little all-star game yeah. a little fergie <laughs> fur delicious my ass <laughs> jesus yeah so oh by the way we will be uh, uh doing I, I think we should do some more like national stuff too with the sixers we'll we'll start with like sixers content and then we'll kind of delve into some other things too so okay we'll do and uh thursday we will do a recap after the Cavs game i say we do that so maybe a lot, do a little bit more of that since uh, the, the season's coming to a close and we got no more Eagles. So Yeah, no it's all Sixers there. now. It's all Sixers and the kickoff to uh, Phillies. Sixers and Flyers. Well, for the hockey people out there. Yeah, for the hockey people out there. You're the three and four of you that are out there. Those people. But we will do some Flyers content as well. That's, that's why we got Caleb on, on the team. That's all him. That's all him. 
So, yeah, there you go. Uh, even though they call me Mr. Hockey. So <laughs> someone calls me Mr. Hockey. <laughs> he thinks he thinks I fake my hockey knowledge. I, I try to sound stupid, even though he thinks uh, in the back of my mind I'm, I'm like a hockey expert. Really? He's joking around. I know he is. He likes to pull legs out there. Yeah, he's a jokester. Yeah, but that's why I love him. So, uh, yeah, he's always he's always calling me Mister Hockey. <laughs> <laughs> like the W. Then that's your new nickname. Then yeah, it, it, it's funny because. Uh, I, I used to think Dustin Bufflin's name was Bifuglian, so I think so. Uh, that that actually led to me never covering hockey games at the Sports Network, which, quite frankly, I wasn't complaining about. So. It's all right, nothing wrong with that. Mispronunciate all their freaking names. Dude. That's what I started doing because uh, I, I was getting like hockey games in the beginning. I'm like, this is bullshit, man. Like, I don't want I don't want to cover hockey. I want to cover the NBA. But I understand that I was new, and you know, I get it. But then. But then he started reading my hockey raps. He's like, all right, we're going to get you to do basketball. Yeah, yeah, to do stuff that people actually okay. care I'm like, about. Good. I'm like, good. You made the right <laughs> Thank call. you. Thank you. I had to eat the, the shit out of the stick for a little bit, and now I get to, to sit at the big kid's table, watch the real sports. There you go. All right, so now we are going to end the show. We were going to do it like five times, but now we're going to do it now. So that is Kyle Gaffner. I am Adrian Fetchy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and we are out. Peace. Peace.